back here with Jeff again. And I'm guessing if you're the assistant head coach and you're auditioning for the head coaching job, losing 62-7 to 7 the day before is probably not a good way to get it. But Dave Wanstead, the head coach of the Dolphins, nevertheless. And he's already made one move. Dan Marino's out. Rick Meyer is in. New quarterback. Oh, he's kidding, I think. Dave Wanstead always wanted to be a head coach again, and now he is taking over the Miami Dolphins. Jimmy Johnson resigned today. And Miami wasted little time naming Wani as their new boss just a year after Wanstead led the Bears to back-to-back 4-12 and seasons. He had been the assistant head coach to Johnson in Miami. He gets a three-year contract. Meanwhile, Johnson leaves after four years with the Dolphins, and he highly endorses Wanstead as his a, replacement. A, a definite mixed emotions type of situation with, with a very dear friend and a, a great football coach. You know, Jimmy walking away, that's sad, and... On the other hand, you're, you're, you're becoming a head coach again, so there's that excitement. So it's, um, it, it's been a trying day. Dave was the right man for the job, and there was an advantage to, to us because he was here for the year. He knows the players. He knows the coaches. He comes in. He doesn't have to take a year or two uh, getting up to speed. And so we thought that, uh, you know, Dave would be the, be the best person for the job, and we, we really believed that after, after looking around they looked, but they got one. NFC playoffs, Minnesota, and the high-scoring Rams. Kurt Warner is the NFL's MVP, but it could have gone to Marshall Falk as well. Look at this run by Falk. 41 yards, cutting it back right there. That gave the Rams a 14-3 lead. But the Vikings hang tough. Jeff George with a perfect strike on the fingertips of Chris Carter. He hangs on, cut, cutting the lead to 14-10. The start of the second half, though, is what turned this game around. Watch Tony Horn take it at his own 10, gets outside, and then it is just flat speed down the sidelines into the end zone. The Rams celebrate with a big win over the Vikings, moving on to the NFC Championship game, 49-37 over Minnesota. Hey, we're all excited. We did what we thought we ought to do and should do and had the ability to do. We've got it done, and now we go on and get prepared to to do what we have to do next. We expected ourselves to be here and we expected ourselves to be winning this game. So to us, you know, this is just one step. We've got a long ways to go from what we feel we can accomplish. All right, ask anyone and they will tell you. Illinois is much better than a one and three team in the Big Ten. At least they should be. But another loss today and the Illini have dropped near the bottom of the pack just ahead of Northwestern in a three-way tie for eighth place with Wisconsin and Iowa. First half at Michigan, Sergio McClain the steal, and then he takes it coast to coast with the rim hanger. Illinois up by five. Late second half, Corey Bradford. He had 28 for Illinois. They were down three at this point. Got it to go off glass and the foul that tied the game at 80. They went to, double, they went to overtime tied at 82. That's where Michigan pulled away. Josh Asplund with the finish. Wolverines beat Illinois 95-91. Notre Dame's seven-game win streak is over, thanks to Jim Beheim and the Syracuse Orangemen. The Orangemen hit it big with Preston Shumpert. His favorite number is three. He wears it on his back. He also likes to hit them. He had three in a row here against the Irish. Boom, boom, and there's another boom. 26 points. The Irish lose 80 to 59. Now to Wichita, Southern Illinois and Wichita State from the Missouri Valley Conference. Second half, that's where we pick it up. Salukis with heavy pressure, they get the turnover. Dan Cross with a pretty lay-in to give Southern a 10-point lead. They went on to beat Wichita State 87-79. Briefly, DePaul and Houston tip off about a half hour from now. I'll have highlights at 10. AFC playoffs, Tennessee leads the Colts 13-9. And the Cleveland Cavs have signed Cornell David to a second 10-day contract. Finally, John Rocker made his first public appearance since those Sports Illustrated comments the other day. A fundraiser in Miami. He just had one thing to say about what was written about him. Don't believe everything you hear. What about what you read? Just believe what you read, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stole your punchline. I'm sorry about that. What does everybody feel about Wanstead? Decent coach, but can't evaluate personnel? Well, or we don't know. At least here, here he had trouble doing that. Right. What he does in Miami is still to be seen, but uh, he'll get his chance. All right. Thanks, Jeff. All right.